Welcome to the presentation of There is no first or third person view in virtual reality, understanding the perspective continuum. I'm Matthias Hoppe and I'm happy to present this on behalf of my co-author. Video games offer a wide variety of game design. For example, the task, characters, story, the artistic look, the control schemes, but one of the important design elements is perspective. First person perspective, for example, places the camera inside the character and therefore the character serves as a vessel for the player. The player can then explore dungeons and swing their weapons and be the character. The person perspective, on the other hand, places the camera outside and often behind the character, give a better overview of the world, give the character more of an identity as the player can see the character model, and it is often used in cinematic cutscene. VR, on the other hand, often replicates first person view from traditional video games. That's because the technology lends itself. Players are placed inside the virtual world, they can look around, and they can interact with the world via motion tracking. Some VR experiences, however, explore the use of traditional third-person view, like this tail here, for example. However, this is uh, different from traditional games in third-person view, as the player is still placed inside the world and can look around. Therefore, the player controls the character via a controller and button presses, but also is inside the world as an observer itself. Another example for third-person view is Astrobot. The player controls the character via a gamepad, like in the example before. However, the player is also a deity itself in the world, which can directly interact with the world and help the small character via the controller gadgets here. Therefore, the player plays two separate characters at the same time. Once the small character, via the gamepad and the button presses, and once the deity with their own body, via the motion control of the controller. Therefore, how is this perceived by different players? Some might say they see it from a third-person perspective and they are the character, Others might perceive it from a first-person perspective, and they have the feeling that they are standing in front of a diorama or a dollhouse. However, this does not necessarily need to exclude each other. Sometimes it's something in between. Fisherman's Hut here places you in a first-person perspective, as you know, but also there's a miniature of yourself on the table that mirrors your movement. And also, there is a giant outside of the hut, and apparently it mirrors the movement as well. So you're kind of three persons in different dimensions with different sizes and perspectives at the same time. So we ask ourselves, how do different perspectives affect our experiences of VR? Are we the puppeteer? Are we the character? Or are we something in between? For this, we created a sword fighting game with motion controls in VR. The player can move, the character mirrors the movement, and we included a sword to make it easier to see the movement of the character from a third-person perspective as the camera is placed behind. For the study, we compared first and third-person perspective. We also looked at different camera setups and different heights. However, please refer to the paper for additional detail. Here you can see the first-person perspective like normal VR experiences, and here you can see the third-person perspective, but with motion control of the character. So if you move, the character moves. If you move your head, the character's head moves, and your uh, view moves as well. The evaluation here is a little harder. Traditional embodiment questionnaires and other means of evaluation usually aim at traditional embodiment understanding. Therefore, we let the users rate on a continuous line, as you can see in the top left here. But we wanted to avoid asking for terms like first or third, embodiment, character, or observer to not prime them in their decision. We also looked at presence, agency, and other things, but please refer to the paper for additional information on this. We found that there are more than two points on this continuum. So, neither it's only First person view, as you might have suspected, because VR lends itself to first person view, but also it's not a traditional understanding of first versus third person. 
Therefore, we suggest a perspective continuum rather than two discrete points. Perspective as an active and deliberate design element could be interesting for future developers. Exposure therapy, for example, could give the client an easy start into the exposure. They could be disconnected from the character and then gradually increase the intensity and difficulty for the exposure itself. This concludes the presentation. We found that there is no first and third person view in VR. Instead, we propose a perspective continuum rather than two discrete points. This could serve as a design element for future VR developers and could also serve as a nice easy mode for exposure therapy.